Hello, and welcome to another episode of What Would Helen Say? Where therapy time is any time. In this week's episode, Adulting, my client is finally coming into her own sense of empowerment. We explore multiple different topics, her relationship with her mom, her relationship with friends, the dynamics at work. A lot of different things are starting to churn for her as she's putting together the pieces that she no longer has to accept things that she genuinely finds unacceptable. Once again, thank you for tuning in. And if you are interested in supporting my work, or if you would like to gain premium access to upcoming episodes and detailed notes about the interventions that are used, please click on the link below for more information. Thank you. Okay, so how has the last week been for you? Um, it was pretty okay. Uh, up until... Wednesday, so I want to say maybe Monday. I want to say yeah, Sunday was pretty shaky, but I ignored it. But Monday, um, yeah, of course, come on, yay! <laughs> okay. So, uh, <laughs> uh, we were um. We traveled over to, you know, where she lives, like in that city. Um, not for her, but I forget exactly what we went over there for. Um, so in order to kill time, my fiance was like, oh, maybe you should just go swing by and, you know, say hi. I'm like, okay, whatever. So I went by. All was well. And then um, she got into saying, like, oh, um, because prior to this, like a lot of families were saying, like, oh, you know, you lost pay. You look really good. Like saying this to me. So I'm like, okay, you know, like, thank you, blah, blah, blah. Because I have been trying to do that. And she's like, oh, well, I remember you told me you was fasting. Um, it must have worked out for you just fine. Um, I can see that you came down a lot. But you might want to think about doing some squats. Because your butt's starting to look flat like my mother's and my grandmother's. So I just started doing my own. <laughs> because, yeah, um, I noticed that my butt started to look nasty, too. So I'm starting to do um, squats as well. So you should try it. So I said, okay. She said, no, I'm serious. I said, okay. I'm like, yeah. Um, time to go. We'll see you when we see you. But you know, I let it slide. I just said, okay. Okay. The kids were there, so I'm like, you know. Okay. Wow. <laughs> so you, you just cannot be exactly like, what? I'm like, okay. Whatever rolls off my back. Um, that Monday, uh, my little sister came to braid my hair, and she ended up calling on the phone. She spoke to my daughter for a little bit on the phone, and then my daughter gave the phone to me because she was playing or doing whatever. And then um, my daughter wanted to take her shirt off because she said the shirt that my sister put on her was too tight. So she was like, you know, I'm taking this off. So, but you know how kids are, like, they start doing something, and then she just stopped taking off the shirt and went to go grab a juice or something. I don't know. And, um, my mother was like, oh, like, what is she doing? So I flipped the camera over to FaceTime. And she was like, oh, girl, you look just like me. You're something with Nancy, just like me, girl. You're so fat. And I'm like, my daughter's three. Don't do that. So I'm like, what we will never do is body shame, especially in my household, not with my daughter. I'll let you get away with it on Sunday. We're not doing this today. So she's like, what you mean, body shame? How am I body shaming? And it was like, at this point, I literally, I don't even want to hear anything else you got to say. So I'm talking over her, so I'm like, I told you, we're not doing this today. She goes, you so stupid. How am I body shaming her and I'm her grandmother? I said, okay, I hung up. Because like, what? What does that have to do with anything? Right. One has nothing to do with the other. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And she's like, look through the pressure. She's like, yes, we do. Look, look. I just hung up. Because, like, when you, I hung up and just tossed my phone on the counter. Because I'm like, yeah, I'm done. So she was, like, blowing my phone. And my sister telling me, she was like, you know, she rang me phone. And I'm like, yeah, I don't care. So she started calling my sister's phone. And I'm like, you didn't answer. You want to speak to her for yourself? So she was like, no, I'm doing it here. I'm busy. 
So when her sister had got back home, she's like, oh, um, what did I say wrong? Like, I don't understand. So she told him, she was like, you called a three-year-old fat and compared her stomach to a 40-plus, you know, your old stomach. Like, who do you talk about? She was like, no, I didn't. She was like, I'm, I was literally standing right there. Like, I heard you and I saw you. She was like, no, um, I was saying that because we both had our shirts up. That's what I was talking about. So she was like, no, your shirt was down. And then you lifted your shirt up to show off your stomach or whatever. She was like, no, I didn't. I think that's where I got it confused. And she was like, yeah, at that point, I just walked away from her. Because I'm like, yeah, it's late. I'm tired. I just don't have time. All right. Yeah. So she sent me a text. I still have yet to read the text. I'm just. Why? Yeah. I'm not reading it. I'm not reading it. Like, I'm not even gonna entertain it because I'm like, this is like almost like the first time that I'm actually saying something. So I'm like, before I even let it all, like, I'm just gonna like burn the whole town down. So before I do that, I'd rather just retract and just relax. (laughs) Because. You know, this week um, I'm going on my trip. Well, tomorrow I leave to go on a trip. So I'm just trying to, like, put myself mentally in vacation mode. And I cannot burn down the town before I leave. <sighs> I'm just going to relax. Absolutely. <laughs> it's just, I've never met somebody like this before. But like, <laughs> what is wrong with you? A lot. <laughs> yes. Yes. And it's just like, you know, you say a lot to me and, you know, I try to brush it off. You make little comments like, hey, yeah, about my child, but don't, don't ever. And especially, you know, because that's mine, for one. And two, that's rude. And three, you know, she's older now, so she's starting to be aware of certain things that people say to her. And she's questioning it like, oh, so what does that mean? Yeah. You're not about to have her feeling how I felt. Like, you're not going to do that. Absolutely. So, I'm really proud of you for setting limits. Thank you. Thank (laughs) you. (laughs) Because you didn't just sit there and take it. You didn't, you know, feel helpless. Like, oh my gosh, this is my mom. I can't do anything. I can't say anything. Blah, 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 blah. No, you set a limit. You're like, okay, no, fine. That's it. We're not doing this. And you tried to explain it to her. She didn't want to hear it. So then you said, okay, then we're done. Absolutely. Just boop. <laughs> Very I felt so good doing it. <laughs> like I wanted to do it over and over again. <laughs> like I literally almost answered the phone just to say something else and hang up again. But I'm like, you know what? That's why I just tossed my phone to the counter because I couldn't reach it anymore because I was getting my hair braided. So I was like, yep, nope, can't touch my phone. So yeah, I was done. <laughs> I have a feeling she's going to give you plenty more opportunities. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. But awesome. I want you to hold on to that positive feeling. Yeah. You know, just how good it feels to set the limits that work for you and to not feel like you have to subject yourself to a situation that's hurting you. Right. Yeah. I felt really good. Good. (laughs) So if I can like link that into like the tail end of the last session where we're talking about empowerment versus strength, like Uh what you just did and what you were describing, that's empowerment. Yeah. Okay. The strength part is if you just sit there and you take it and you take it and you're strong enough to sit there and take it, but empowerment is being able to say, no, enough is enough, and I don't have to sit here and take it, and there's something I can do about it. Right, yeah. I noticed that. I'm like, you know, Sunday, like I said, you know, I just brushed it off, but I'm just like, come on, and I we day two back to back, like, no. And you're not bothering me, you're bothering my kid, like, don't do that, she's innocent. I am too, but she's, she's three, like, really? Come on. Don't do that. I don't like that. No, that's not nice at all. Uh-uh. At all. 
I did not like that at all. I mean, also, um, not only was it my sister here, um, I had one of my friends over with her son as well, and I'm just like, you know, you know that, you know, other people are here, like, so it's like companies, so and they even be more rude. Like, come on, don't do that. It's the audience. Right. And I was just, like, super thankful that at the time when she started to stay, like, my daughter had already walked off to do whatever she wanted to do. To go and grab us. I think, yeah, I think it was a juice, but, yeah. So by the time she wasn't, like, you know, directly next to the phone, but if she was, then it would have made it worse. And it's like, you know, I felt that there was so much more I wanted to say, but, like I said, I did not want to put myself in that mood. Plus, uh, my daughter doesn't really like she doesn't like to hear me yell or scream or anything like that so I try not to do that around her because I know that it bothers her I understand that and I admire you for having that self control and being able to say okay no not doing that here but I do want to offer you the opportunity to vent to let it out because sometimes mm -hmm. doing that is more helpful right I'm I'm literally waiting to do that so bad. <laughs> like I'm waiting for the day. I'm pretty sure it is it, gonna come soon. Um, especially with that because any little thing, it doesn't matter what I do or what I say or what I don't do or say. It always like travels to say like, oh, did you hear what she said to me? Or did you hear what she did? And it's gonna come back to me. I'll give it a week. That's usually how long it takes for somebody to call my phone like, oh, well, what did you say, you know, to her? Why did you say this? Or why did you do that? And that's probably, I feel, going to be my breaking point because I feel like I'm working so hard at, like, you know, trying to better myself. So it's like for you to just constantly, like, throw daggers into it, it's just like, come on. Right. Like, at this point, you're like, Drowning in your own misery, and you need to control that or fix that on your own time. Yes, those are her feelings. Those are her, you know, experiences in life. She needs to own them instead of pushing them onto you. Right. So, but come on, it's been too long now. We need to get together. Get <laughs> 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 together, please. But the reality is she may never get it together. Right. And right. that's the piece you have to live with, but that's also the piece you have to set limits with. Right. So once everything goes through the cycle and it comes back to you of what you said and what you did and how your mom's the victim, like how do you want to address it? Um, I will, I want to address, address it with her directly because if I'm right, she'll call my grandmother, my grandmother will call me, because that's usually how it goes. And I can tell you exactly how the conversation is going to go with my grandmother, as soon as I answer, she's going to say, oh, hello, you know, what are you doing, where's the kids, blah, blah, blah. Her first thing she always says, and what's your problem? That's exactly how all the conversation goes. All the time. So just I don't even know what's my problem. Yeah. Like, and then, you know, I'll tell her what happened. She's like, well, that's not right. You know, saying, like, oh, what my mother did is not right. But then she's like, but, you know, that's how she is. And that's what bothers me. So I probably just let her say, like, okay. You know, that's not, I don't care how she is. It's just, I'm not going to deal with that. And then. At that point, I'm going to have a conversation with my mother. Like, I feel like now I am ready to let her know. And if it takes all day, I'm ready to let her know how I felt from age four until 27. If she's willing to listen at all. Yeah. Wow. Because it goes back that far. So, I'm willing to bet she's probably not going to listen <laughs> <laughs> so if she doesn't listen i still want you to have that outlet so if that means just saying it out loud just to yourself if she's hung up the phone and mm -hmm. she's nowhere near 
still say it out loud for you. And if you don't feel comfortable yeah. saying it out loud because the kids are around, then try to write it down or do something just to get it out. Now that it's come to the surface, right. I don't want you to push it back down in there. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> Yeah, I think, like, you know, I think I'm, I'm ready now because, like I said, like, it felt good. And, like, for the first time in a long time, uh, like, you know, my experience with her or encounter with her, like, I haven't felt that good afterwards. Like, I'll be so, like, sad about it or, like, I'm super, super mad, like, screaming because out of my lungs. Like, I didn't do that. Like, I was able to call my fiancé on his break. Well, no, he called literally, like, right after it happened. And I was like, um, the phone was ringing and I'm like, I know she's not calling again. And they're like, oh no, it's not her this time or whatever. So once I answered, I was able to explain it to him, but I didn't yell or scream more. Like I more, I laughed at it more than anything else because it felt like so good. I was, I was happy. And he was like, um, so are you mad or? <laughs> He's like, I don't know what to say. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I am, but. It felt good. And he was like, oh, that's different. Okay. I'm like, yeah, it is different. It felt different, but it felt good. Um, so, yeah. I think I'm ready now. Well, I know that I'm ready now. And it's just like, whatever happens after, beyond me, I really don't care. Great. You don't get to decide everything that happens beyond that anyway. You know, there's a role that she's going to play, but... It's just a willingness, a willingness mm -hmm. to say what you need to say, stand up for yourself, and accept whatever comes next. Right. Yep, I'm sure it will be good, and I'm okay with that. I, I can finally say that I'm literally okay with her not being okay with what I have to say. Like, it's not going to bother me whatsoever. <laughs> but I'm happy that you're in this place that you're not looking at the situation from a place of fear anymore. You're looking at mm -hmm. it from a place of your own sense of empowerment and what works for you. Right. I think like this. I don't know if it was because it was like back to back days of her like making, you know, like shame and comments or if it was just more because it was geared towards my baby is just like, no. Like that struck like a complete different nerve. And I'm just like, not happening. We're not going to repeat that. Uh -uh. Right. That mama bear was coming out and was like, not my baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm like, it is not that one. And I think I just said that to somebody. I don't know. I'm like, you know, you can say whatever you want about me, but mm -mm, not her. Not her. Okay. So I can see the connection there because if you feel like this dynamic started with your mom when you were around four and your daughter is three and you see your mom starting this dynamic with her, then you already know what the next 20 something years look like and being like, nope, shutting it down now. Yep. 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 But not even, uh -uh. I'm not doing it. She, um, my sister came back over here again yesterday and she called, she didn't call me, she called my sister, of course. And, um, she, he probably still come under for like a couple of minutes, but uh, my friend came over again as well with her son. So my sister was playing with the little boy. She really didn't care for the phone. And I was just like, yes, yes, yes. But like, I kind of, I didn't want to talk to her. I didn't want my baby to talk to her either. I was like, thank God she baby. <laughs> but yeah. She didn't ask to speak to me, and I was super happy because I'm just like, I'm ready though. It, it would have been fine, but um, yeah, it's about time that we had that conversation. Right. Um, it is what it is at this point. <laughs> Absolutely. But I'm proud of you for being where you're at right now and just your own sense of readiness. Right. 
I never thought I would see the day. Like, it just, I don't know. I kept saying, like, you know, I was thinking about it. I'm like, oh my gosh. I'm saying to myself, like, girl, like, what came over you? But I'm like, finally. Finally. Like, I feel like we had, like, little instances where I would see, like, little things here and there, but I would still feel so bad about it or, like, super upset. And it was just like, finally, I felt like I was right for, you know, saying what I said. Like, I didn't want to take it back and be like, oh, my God, that was so disrespectful. Oh, my God, that was so out of line. Like, oh, my God, what are they going to say about me? Like, I was just like, girl, I don't care. <laughs> but it's like, yes, yes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, yeah, like, even my friend and uh, my sister, they were just looking at me. It was like, I never saw this before. I don't know. My friend was like, yeah, um. If you want me to leave, I can. I'm just like, no, 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 it's fine. She can say. <laughs> I think I confused everybody, but in my mind, I knew I felt good, so. <laughs> and that's all that matters. It's all that matters, and people can be confused. They'll figure it out. They'll catch up. <laughs> Whatever. <Right. laughs> yeah, yeah. But just keep doing the things that feel right to you. Right. Definitely. Okay. Wow. I feel like, man, we can't really back that up with anything else. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I almost feel like that was a session. Like, <laughs> I was going to say that's the last. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. Well, that was like it's like an awesome start to your week. This boost of wait, wait. Imagine you have a beginning of the week. That's crazy. But yeah, okay. so good. Okay. So what else is going on? Um. Besides that, uh, I do know I will not be planning any more group trips anytime soon. That was just like, it's just so much. I just, I don't have time. I've been kind of ignoring them as well. I'm just like, I'll see you when I get there. If I see y'all, I don't know, but I know I'll be there. So, this is your bachelorette trip? Yeah. And everybody's just like dropping like flies. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That's not supposed to happen. <laughs> right, right, right. I don't understand it. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Like, oh, my goodness. Yeah. I'm just ready to go. Don't know who will be there, but uh, I'll be there. Go <laughs> and have fun and enjoy yourself because if nothing else, you deserve to de stress. Yes, finally. That's all. I'm just like literally counting down the hours. Like, I'm ready to go. I'm ready. Okay. So, do you have a plan, like, of things you want to do? You want to make sure that you get out of this trip? Um, honestly, no. I know there have been other things going on, like, in the background, um, with the girls, like, they've been playing things or whatever, but as far as me, no, I really just want to go and just see some sun and just relax, honestly. Okay. <laughs> That's and at least, like, a decent nap. <laughs> <laughs> Or a full night's rest, honestly, not even just a nap. I just need like a complete eight hours. This is all I need. If it's longer than eight hours, I'm okay with that too, but at least a solid eight hours. I'm fine. Nope, I completely understand. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, I don't have to hear, well, I probably still have to hear mom because I'm pretty sure she'll call me, but. I don't have to hear that constantly. I don't have to change a diaper. I don't have to wash dishes. 
I think it's relax. And it's just like, uh, most of my friends who are coming, the ones who are moms, they're like literally packed suitcases at the door. Like, they are just ready completely. And I'm just like, wow, so it's not just me. It's not just me. No, no. That is moms <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. Like, the other girls, like, some of them, um, they call me, like, you know, they were packing today or last night. And I'm just like, oh, yeah, I was just thinking we're already at the door. We are ready to go. <laughs> we're ready. I definitely think that's like a major sign of who's a mom. <laughs> so, oh, I get a break from my kids? <laughs> I'm out. Exactly. We are ready. And those are the ones I'm not having problems with. <laughs> they have been this process has been seamless. They're ready to go. Because probably as soon as you told them about it, they told everybody else, I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> one of them is possibly yes from the very first time. She's like, Oh well, what are the dates? And I told her, I'm like, you know, I'll let you know, uh, once we figured out the dates, probably within that same day, I'm not sure. The next one, she was like, yeah, I already got a babysitter. I'm like, oh, you move fast. I'm like, we didn't even decide on flights or, you know, hotel or Airbnb. She was like, well, no, it's fine. We'll figure that out later, but I got a babysitter. I was like, okay. And she was like, yeah, you know what? Let me call you back. I got to get a babysitter for the wedding. I'm like, that's not until August. <laughs> no, 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 no. I need a couple days. I was like, okay. <laughs> Do you guys only stop you? She's making sure she got her me time. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Who's cracking out? But yeah, I can't wait. Good, good, good. Because I know from experience that when you're a full time mom and you finally get that time away from your kids, if you don't have a plan to do something with that time, then you feel like you wasted it. Right, yeah. I know, um, there's only honestly one place that I told them that, like, we just better go to. It's a restaurant. Um, so that's one thing. I think I may probably want to do a spa, but I'm not really sure about that yet. But, um, yeah. Okay. Other than that, I'm okay with, um, any plans that they need. They, for the most part, know me pretty well, so. I'm okay with that. Good. But I mean, you'll feel more accomplished at the end of the trip. Even if you went on with, I need to have a nap every day. I need to mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, eat a whole meal without having to share it with anybody. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know, just those simple things that if they're on your list and you can come back and say, ooh, I did everything on my list, you will feel like uh -huh. that was a great trip. Yeah, yeah. I know uh, one thing I was telling my fiance and one of my other mom friends, I'm just like, I just to put on like real clothes, but I had to order all new clothes. So she was like, yeah, me too. <laughs> like, there's no more leggings or yoga pants and a t-shirt. I'm like, this is real life. <laughs> so I'm like, you know, I'm trying to put together my outfits. I sent it to one of my friends. She was like, why are you sending me clothes? I'm like, I just had to make sure that I still knew how to dress. I didn't know. I wasn't sure. She was like, you're fine. Like, seriously, stop. <laughs> but it's real. Like, Listen, girl, you got to double check. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I need to double check. It's been a minute. It's been a minute. Like, I usually dress super comfortable, super relaxed, because you just never know. Kid is going to spit up, or you just, you just never know. Mm-hmm. Never know. Plus, you're working from home, too. So, it's like, well, what are exactly. you doing this for? <laughs> exactly. Like, I literally sweat, leggings, yoga pants, that's like, every day. Every day. So, yeah. And the Crocs or Uggs. So, I started to pack, um, I put my Crocs in my suitcase. My fiance was like, no, take them out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you don't know. You're not doing that. Don't do that to yourself. I was like, okay. <laughs> Give yourself permission to look cute. 
Yes, yeah, that's what he was like. Don't, don't, let me see what you got in here. I was like, okay. Yeah. But yeah, it feels good. Awesome. Okay. So, any other thoughts or feelings about the trip or who's going? Um, well, the friend that I told you that I reconnected with, mm -hmm. um, she's coming on a trip. Oh, okay. Right. Um, so I don't think, I didn't tell everybody, only the one, like, who organized the trip. And, you know, I was going to make it, like, a big PSA, and the one who organized it, that's the other mom friend, the one who's, like, super ready. She was like... Why are you explaining anything to anyone? I'm like, okay. So she's like, it's nobody's business. If the trip is for you and that's who you choose, then what is the explanation for? Whoever is uncomfortable, then that's them and their feelings. Like, it has nothing to do with you. Mm -hmm. I'm like, hmm. I think I just won't say anything because she's like, yeah, it's not a problem. It's not like, you know, she did anything to anyone else and, you know. If that were the case, then that's a conversation that they can have. It's not up to you to decide, like, you know, if they feel good about it or not. Exactly. Okay. So, my thing is this. And I may have mentioned it before. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> when you go to explain yourself, like, why this is happening and providing justification and reasons... What uh -huh. you're really doing is you're opening the door for other people to judge if it's a good enough reason or justification. Um, yep, I agree. Because I, I noticed it uh, when I brought up to someone else that her and I had a conversation and we're like, you know, back to basically ourselves. And they were like, why? And I'm just like, well, you know, because we're fine, like, you know. But, oh, well, you know, I feel like she was wrong for not speaking to you. And blah, blah, blah. You know, her relationship got the best of her, and that was her fault, and blah, blah, blah. I'm just like, yeah, this is probably why I should have just kept it to myself. Like, <laughs> what I understand. Yeah. So if you made it a decision in your life doesn't affect anybody else, you do not owe anybody else an explanation for why you chose to do what you did. Wait. I'm sorry to realize that. I think that one was like an eye opener for me once I explained, you know, to that person. You know, well, we're fine. And she just, like, every little thing I said, I'm just like, why are you still going? Like, I mean, that makes sense. Like, I gave her a reason basically to keep going because I just kept on sharing like more and more and more. So, it was, like, every little thing that I said, she would just, like, find a way to just pop it. And just be like, you know, well, I think, you know, well, you, I'm just like, okay, whatever. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. So, for next time, you tell people what you want to tell them. And they may have, well, why are you doing that? Why, why don't you do it this way? Like, it is what it is, and that's it. That's where I am right now. So, I'm just looking forward to having fun. Yes. And whoever doesn't have fun or feels threatened by, you know, her being there, stay home or go home. I don't know. But, but we're all here to have a good time. Right. Exactly. <laughs> if they go, they spend all this money, they spend their time, they spend whatever to go only to be upset about something that's truly not affecting them. That's their choice. Let them have it. Got it. <laughs> I'm just sitting back and just ready to have fun. That's all. Good, good, good. I'm so happy for you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Very welcome. All right. Anything else going on? 
Well, well, well. Uh, well, first, let me see. I did have a conversation with HR at my job because I was trying to figure out, you know, what's next for me. I feel like it's like super stagnant, and I've always been scared of being stagnant. So, um, I reached out, you know, I checked the internal job page like every day to see like what's around and everything. There was a position that I tried out twice for and it just didn't work for me. I'm like, you know, maybe that's not, you know, what's meant for me. So maybe I shouldn't even be going for that, you know? Uh, so I saw a position open. Uh, I reached out to the hiring manager who just so happened to be um, my previous manager, but she moved up. So I saw it, you know, I reached out to her and we had a conversation. So she was like, you know, apply for it. Like, go ahead, talk to your lead or whatever, you know, let them know that you're going to apply. But she was like super encouraging, telling me about the position and everything. And then I spoke to my lead. Um, and she was like, I guess if you think you can do it, you should. And I'm just like, okay, whatever. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, maybe, maybe I'm just looking at it wrong. But no, that's just basically how she said it. And was like, oh, well, you know, it's a lot of work. Um, you need to have extensive knowledge in that field. And if you don't, then you're kind of going to be like SOL or whatever. And I'm just like, okay. Still applied anyway. Good, good. And um, she was like, she wrote me again and was like, oh, because the process is um, once you apply, you have to send out an email to um your lead, HR, and whoever's the hiring manager. And the hiring manager, you know, the one that I used to be our manager, her manager as well. So I included her and I cp CP her on the email. She sent me a message like, oh, I told you, you know, she's not your manager anymore, so why do you keep including her and everything? I'm like, well, maybe you should go and check the job break because she's the hiring manager. So she was like, oh, uh, so then I screenshot her previous message. I'm like, you clearly said to send it to the hiring manager. Mm-hmm. And she was like, oh, uh, no, you can send it to the recruiter instead. But if she's the recruiter, then yeah. I'm like, that's not what you said, but okay, whatever. Right after I submitted my application, you know, the leads and everybody gets notified once you do that. The job had already been up for about, I want to say, two weeks. No one said anything about it. She never mentioned it. As soon as I applied, she got the notification. Literally 10 minutes later, there's an email blast that went out about the position being open. Um, and, you know, whoever is interested should apply, and there's only one position available. And I'm just like, okay, at this point, you had two weeks to do that. You didn't even know about the job until I brought it to your attention. So now I'm looking at it like, you know, I kind of don't even want to be with the company anymore. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And I'm just like, you know, you, you guys, you're one of us. Like, why don't you want to say you? What's the problem? <laughs> Unfortunately, a lot of people see the positive in life. Like, it, there's a limited amount of it. And only mm-hmm. certain people can get to whatever that positive is. So if they help somebody else get to the positive, then there's a chance there there isn't any for them. So they right. have that mentality of, no, not not you. Let me scoot back and let me sabotage you or do whatever it is because they don't understand like the concept of abundance and how there's always enough. There's enough. Yes. <laughs> always, yes. There's only like 200 internal job postings right now. So it's like, you know, I found out later on, like, from the other lady. She was like, oh, I'm going to ask about the pay rate. I'm like, the prices of things are going up. Like, you know, the pay is decent now, but it's not enough. And um, she was like, you know, you'll definitely get another salary, but um, you'll be making the same amount as a lead because, you know, it's a specialist role and blah, blah, blah. I'm just like, oh, it makes sense. That's why my lead doesn't want me to basically get it because, you know, I'll be making exactly what you're making. And it's just like, well, that's weird. We sent out an email blast, and the email blast goes to about, like, three or 400 people. Wow. And the position, you know, like I said, had already been out for two weeks. So why not, you know, send out this blast two weeks ago? 
Like, I purposely waited to apply for it. Just to make sure that I was ready, you know, to take that next step. So, why try to send out the email literally 10 minutes after I submitted my application? Well, I hope you don't leave the company just because of this one person. Um, because that sounds like a personal issue with her. Um, but if there's other, you know, examples that you have where it shows that maybe it's part of the company's culture that, oh, it happens over here and it happens over there and it happens over there, then, okay, I could get that. Uh -huh. If it's one person, then I really hate you to, I'd hate to see you give up something that may get you somewhere. You know, right. even... Even if it's not your lifelong career, it's not your ultimate goal, that doesn't matter. But if it can possibly get you somewhere in life that, yeah, you would like to be. Right. I'd like to see you give it up because one person is being discouraging. They're mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> kind of being discriminating, it sounds like. <laughs> Basically, yeah. You know, I don't want to leave entirely Sorry, okay. <laughs> sorry. I didn't want to be entirely um it's going to be my and I think it's kind of a problem because this is like um the longest that I've been with company. Like any company. I'm normally like after the year. I'm not satisfied enough. Okay. So it's just like now, like what's the next room? Okay. Well, I think right now you have nothing to lose by hanging in there and seeing what happens. But if this is a person who is, you know, potentially sabotaging every effort. <laughs> You know, for you to get ahead, then yeah, th then that's when it becomes a much bigger concern. Yeah, and that's the thing too, because it's like, like I said, because it's a process for internal moves. Like, no matter what position I go for, I have to notify her first, and I don't like that. Like, I wish we can just like apply, you know, but whatever. But we absolutely have to go do. You have to tell them first, then to not be doing all the things. Like, does it require that person's approval, or is just you have to notify them? You just have to notify them. Okay. Just, um, I'm assuming just in case you know you use the position, if they have to like change them for your position, like, I don't really know why exactly, but that's the like you know that one. Okay, so <clears throat> I mean, I have no idea how that company works or anything of that nature, but do you suspect that she may be like sabotaging? Like if she knows you apply to a certain job, then she's also reaching out to people within the company and saying things? Yeah. Um, I do because, only because, um, I'm not really familiar with her, um, since I've been there, this is my fourth, um, lead that we've had, because everyone's literally, like, moving around, so, right, <laughs> so, um, recently she had asked me to apply for a senior role under her, but I didn't want to apply for that role, so I just didn't do it. Because I don't want to be in this department anymore, and I've been constantly saying that I'm going to switch departments. Like, I've literally walked into the interview saying, I'm not going to stay in this department. I said that. I made that very clear. Because that's not what I want to do. Um, I took the job more so for convenience, um, just the hours and everything like that. But um, yeah, and then the benefits as well. But I feel that because I didn't apply for the role 
that were like, you know, kind of sticking to her a little bit, a little bit longer. That's the main thing I'm like, well, you know, she's like stand up and set anything else that would be. Because it's not in her department. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm not sure of how to take that because I'm not sure if her behavior is like a backwards compliment that she thinks you're a good worker and she doesn't want to lose you. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's confusing. And we don't really, we don't fuck as much, you know, even when we were in the office, we didn't really speak a lot. It would just be like, you know, a high vibe kind of thing. Um, we have like minimal conversations, but um, even now, there's times where I make suggestions about a lot of things that need to change or things of that nature, and it just kind of get brushed off. Um, so when I go above her, then it's a problem. So I'm just like, I don't know. Mm. Well, either way, that doesn't sound like a good dynamic for you. Right. And this is the only reason I would say that I have a problem and then when i you know bring it to her directly or you know we have like our zoom meeting and i'm something that i have to explain to her i feel that we should have more of um especially working from home you know we need that connection basically hiring new people none of us know each other nobody knows who anybody is something like at least with our team you know we need to have these teams and speak to you or whatever they can be to go over things and she's like, oh, I'll see, I don't know. And then she sends out a message probably being later, like, oh, guys, you know, I'm thinking of, you know, starting to assign, like, meetings between the team and blah, blah, blah. And it's okay. Um, certain training docs that I need, like, on my own time that was supposed to be implemented into, like, um, onboarding and everything that never happened either. And so I sent it to another department, like the head of that department. And she's like, oh, yeah, I heard that, you know, you were speaking to them about, um, you know, training documents. I just wish that this is a conversation that you and I should have had before. And it's like, well, I tried to tell you. I mean, you worked me off. So I went directly back to the physical. So it's not about you. It's not about me. I'm seeing things that are wrong, and I think that we should change them. Has nothing to do with you at all. Right. So it sounds like she's taking it personally. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, when it comes to work dynamics, I think depending on your role, like there's certain things that sure you can do to help improve this dynamic. But then other times it's a question of, well, is there really a benefit to you to try to help this other person improve just so you can move on and not be bothered with them anyway? <laughs> so, okay. So I get where you're coming from. I can see if, you know, um, if she was going to continue to be in this position, um, well, more so if you were going to continue to be in this position and have to be under her, then I can see how it would be important for you to say, okay, I, I need to leave this dynamic. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out, I don't want to just up and leave. I kind of don't have a backup plan, and normally I do. But, um, Okay. So I can understand if like some anxiety is starting to set in and saying, oh my gosh, if this job isn't going to work out because I'm stuck under this person and, you know, they're not very supportive and this is a difficult, you know, dynamic, what am I going to do? Um, <laughs> I get that. But right now you do have an option, you know, see where this new position takes you. You know, if you have a good rapport with the old supervisor and that old supervisor was encouraging you, 
you know, to apply for the position and thinks that you would do well in it. Like that sounds pretty validating. Yeah. Um, what do you want to see, um, for sure. This question just doesn't work out. I still want to have a conversation. I reached out to HR again to see if I could speak with um, the HR DC about it. Um, you know, I'm like, you know, we need to have some type of conversation to see what's the next person. Like, how do I go about it? You know, I don't feel satisfied. I just feel like, okay. On the clock in, and without podcast, right, right. It doesn't feel like you're working towards something. No, like the same routine over and over. It kind of like stumps my productivity because like I don't want to do anything because I don't want to. And once I start to feel like that, and any job that's when I know it's time for me to go. So at this point, because I've been with them for so long, I'm trying to figure out if it's time for me to leave them completely. I think you should try to move from that department and position first. And if that doesn't work out, okay, then start looking elsewhere for options. But at least you're not putting immediate pressure on yourself that you have to start job hunting. You have to do this. You have to do that. I mean, when we first started meeting, you're talking about how overwhelmed you are with everything. So that's exactly what I was doing like a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> I'm talking like I'm like in full blown interviews and everything. And I'm just like, yo, what are you doing? I just had to stop. I deleted the app off my phone. Like I didn't even go on my personal laptop at all. Like, nope, not doing it. I just stopped myself. I literally felt like I was insane. Stop. You know, causing more problems. Right. So if you can remain stable right now uh, until you get through the next couple of months, <laughs> you know, certain things will have calmed down. It'll be off of your plate. You don't have to worry about it anymore. And then if you want to introduce it, you know, then, then you probably have more time, more energy, you know, more availability to try to put some effort into it. Okay. Well, that is our time for tonight. <laughs> but I'm so happy you're going on your trip and you're going to have a great time and you're going to sleep and you're going to get to be a grown up. <laughs> definitely have fun and then I will talk to you next time. Okay, thank you. Bye. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Hello and thank you again for having tuned in to another episode of What Would Helen Say? Where therapy time is anytime. I hope you'll come back next week as it will be post-bachelorette party and we will get to hear all the tantalizing details of what happened on this trip and how it affected my client. Thank you once again. And if you like what I'm doing and you would like to support me, or if you're interested in gaining premium access to upcoming episodes and detailed notes about the interventions that are used, please click on the link below for more information. Thank you.